Father and God, we thank you and we thank you for another day of wisdom and an opportunity to comprehend, to learn, and to be better stewards in what you have um, placed in our hands. We thank you now and we ask that those that hear us will receive us. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Hey, God bless you. Welcome to the Money Minute Ministry, um, September the 7th, 2020. God bless you. Uh, this is a pre-recording uh, for um, Saturday, and we thank God for that opportunity to be able to come into your homes and into your hearts and into your hearing. We pray that you would be able to comprehend. So just point your hand towards your device with me and say, Lord, increase my wisdom. Thank you now. We thank you that you have invited us in. Uh, last week, we talked about avoiding, avoiding big mistakes uh, preparing for wealth building, preparing for retirement, preparing for a better future. And um, you want what I consider, Susie Orkman says, an ultimate retirement. And that means ability to spend time with loved ones uh, in a nutshell. Not having millions and billions of dollars. Uh, we'll talk about that later. Um, I uh, named about eight things that you should avoid. Or, or avoiding big mistakes. But I want to focus on number two I covered uh, some time back. Um, and it was proper allocation, avoiding proper allocation. Um, <clears throat> in a pie chart, I always looked at five uh, things in my life um, starting in 1988. I had a pie chart that would reflect where my wealth was at. And it considered it CDs. Back then I was buying CDs. They was paying seven to 8% uh, from banks. It was insured money. And so certified certificate of deposits and what I mean by CDs. And then I had stocks. And then I had cash in banks. And then I had uh, insurance policy uh, because I didn't have a lot of wealth. Uh, but I had an insurance policy, term life, not whole life, term life, to cover me because so many people are dependent on my survival. And mainly that was just my wife. I wanted to make sure that she was taken care of. And then uh, my assets. Uh, I didn't own a home. I had a car and jewelry. And so those five things I put uh, every five years, I'd go back. I think in 88, I had about $1,800 uh, in total. Uh, maybe the value might have been, I had a car that I bought $900 for, and they would only give me 250 at the junkyard. And so I had about $1,800 in total assets. Um, but I want us to understand something uh, about proper allocation. Uh, many of us get confused um, that there are, <clears throat> in our life, two things financially that is divided among us and God. God has a part in your finance, and you have a part in your finance. And many times, we're confused to what is our part. And that's what I first want to get some clarity on us, that whatever we have, a part belongs to God. And a part he has lent to us is a better way of putting that. Um, I'm encouraging you uh, to grasp in your mind proper allocation. And I'm going to come from you and what belongs to the Lord. Uh, the first thing I want you to understand, uh, have your Bible when we're joining at this meeting. Uh, the first thing is what I consider, um, how do we know what is God? Well, um, First Chronicles 29 and 11 says, Yours, O Lord, is the greatest, the power and the glory, the victory and the majesty, for all that is in heaven and in earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you exalted as head over all. Twelve, both riches and honor comes from you. And you reign over all. Uh, 12 continues, but I, I want you to get the gist. Everything in heaven and earth belongs to the Lord. And he has given it to us uh, to be good stewards. 
And I think we ought to start tracking, as you can see, I have uh, books, Bible, paper, notes, and I have something that I want to come back and talk to you, another big mistake to avoid, that it is really a trap from Satan. Uh, let me touch on that right now. Credit card. It's a credit card. They sent it to me in the mail. Uh, I didn't bring the card, but I want to show something that the law has tried to defend the people, made them printed in big print. Look where it says, 26.99 interest they're charging. 27%. Now, sometime back in this money minute ministry, I talked about the rule of 72. So at 27%, we would divide that into 72, and we could do that very quickly. Thank God for technology. Um, 72 divided by 27 equals, no, that, that did something else that I didn't want it to do. 20, 27 divided by 72 is almost three years and seven months. Uh, well, that's not right either. Well, let's do it this way, Jimmy. Oh, Mrs. Douglas would be proud of me. Um, two years and four months, um, your money would double by paying this interest rate. So if you borrow $10,000 through the credit card, charged up $10,000 worth, in two years you'd have paid them back twenty. That's a trap. One of the big mistakes to avoid is high interest. Learn how to pay off within, I say, 28 days since that's your month. You know what I mean. Uh, February. Uh, pay it off in 28 days and pay them nothing. But better yet, cash is king. Save up your money. Learn how to be content. Now, that's a good scripture. Uh, let's go to Philippians 4, 11 uh, through 12. Philippians uh, 4. Philippians, amen, here we come. We're cooking with gas now. Philippians 4 and 11 and 12. It says something like this. This is the New King James Version. Not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. Now, that's something that all of the saints need to start speaking in their spirit. Lord, teach me how to be content. I'm up. Pause right there. That's the end of the loving verse. I'm going to come back to 12. Got a spiritual thought I had with um, my um, media personnel um, today who's taping. I said to him, there's no difference to me between one million and one billion. He looked at me and I said, because I'm not going to spend one million dollars or one billion. Uh, I'm not going to go buy a five million dollar jet uh, because I have no need to fly over to China and do business over there, uh, just because I don't have any connections over there. Uh, I'll get on a plane, uh, go up to the airport and rent and pay my $500 and go where I need to go. Well, I said all that to say, some of us strive to make millions and we haven't learned to be content with thousands. And so I say sometimes your passion can do, uh, drive a desire in you that's not godly. And so you miss out the enjoyment of stages in your life. Um, I'm building wealth to leave. I'm not building wealth to have. And I'm learning that whatever I leave is more than what they had on their own. And so I learned how to be content. Now, the 12th verse says this. I know how to be a base and I know how to abound. Everywhere in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. And so he said, I've learned. And learning uh, takes some time. And so I say to you, uh, learn how to absorb from the things around you. Uh, I, I said to the young man, I'm going to teach you something you don't even know you're learning. And uh, in other words, sometimes you can just be exposed to stuff and catch uh, that had blessed me just by going to the library, uh, talking to people, 
uh, picking up periodicals, Foles Magazine, Wall Street Journal, reading. And I'm not a, a, a very advocate of reading. And I encourage every young person, read all you can get your hands on. And in my old age, I'm learning how to read everything I can get my hands on. Uh, now, it's taken me some time because I didn't train my brain to read and read. And so, old oh, sleep comes to me when I get about the third chapter. But I force myself, well, next night, read four chapters. And so that's the same way read 10 scriptures or next week, 12 scriptures and increase your learning. Uh, but the object of this uh, lesson today is be properly uh, allocated. And so you don't know what you don't know. You have to expose yourself to knowledge. And so uh, avoid high interest rates. Uh, don't just take money because somebody's going to lend it to you. Know what your part of the obligation is. And you say with me, I'm allergic. I'm allergic. To interest. To interest. And that, that'll, that'll keep your spirit from taking a $10,000. You'll do just like this when it comes. Because within that message, it's something to lure you in. Now, remember... And if you know anything about fishing, um, when a man comes to the deck and a guy's up there fishing, he says, what's biting? And they'll say, oh, perch are biting. And he'll look in his tackle box and get the lure for a uh, perch. If they say catfish is biting today, he'll look in his tackle box and get a lure to catch catfish. And remember, Satan's got a tackle box. He learns what you're biting on. He know if you're in need or hungry. And so that's why you want to get in your spirit contentment so you won't be taken by the tricks of Satan. All those who are hungry need to understand this. To a hungry man, bitter meat tastes sweet. Things that shouldn't taste good taste sweet. If you're a person in, in need of attention, now I'm going to drift off. Uh, you'll get yourself getting some attention that's not beneficial for you. If you're a person just hungry for money, you'll get yourself in the traps of trying to schemes and get rich quick schemes, and you're going to get lured and you're going to get caught because Satan got a tackle box and he asking his demons in hell, what's biting today? You know, or the new iPhone. All you need is a phone to say hello and make transactions and tax. And some of you is getting every new version and you're fatting, fatting the frog for the snake, as the old people say. I'm talking about big mistakes to avoid. Learn how to get in your spirit and have a pie chart to properly allocate your wealth and build. And every five years I go back and take a picture. Oh, I see I don't have as many CDs as I have stocks. When I was in my 30s and 40s, I got out of my fear and got into the stock market. One of the biggest machines ever invented to generate wealth. And many of us have avoided that because of our fear. You can uh, be exposed to anything if you would read or listen. I'm doing the reading for you. I hope that you're doing the listening. Learn that you have a responsibility. Everything belongs to God. He's put stuff in your hand because it needs direction and he want to know if you're a good steward. Remember he gave, gave talents and one man buried his talent because he wouldn't read. And God really basically cursed him and took his talents and gave it to the man who multiplied his talents. Don't let fear drive you. If you 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, now we're living to an expected age, men, 84. Women 86. If you retire in your 50s, you almost have 25 more years left to live on income. And so I tell you, if you got a 10, 10 year window, be in the stock market. Uh, don't be in bonds. Uh, have some money in bonds. But God forsake, know that you have a 10 year window. I say to people, if you was in the stock market in 2008, you got hit. If you was in bonds, you was in great territory. But what happened in when 2010, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 
19th and the year 2020 came by, it was one of the greatest bull markets in this country history. If you'd have been in bonds in those last 10 years, you lost out. And so I say to you, uh, learn how to do your elbow grease, your reading, your research, properly allocate and understand that you have a part. Uh, the scriptures teaches us that God has a part and we have a part and we need to find out our part. Our part is to be good stewards what God has entrusted to us. Uh, learn how to track your windfall. Uh, some people save their money just to go to the mall and spend it. Well, have an allocation of what you're going to spend at the mall and project what you need to build your wealth because one day, as the old people say, every tub must sit on his own bottom. Another expression they would say, God bless his child who got his own. In other words, um, God will invest more in you when you look like you can help yourself. When you can help yourself, you can help others. But if you can't help yourself, you can't help others. And so I'm asking you to learn how to properly allocate your money, envision so much in different areas, and know what you need. I used to have a policy of $100,000 term life, and then when I got up to, with two children, I took my term policy up to a half a million dollars because I was pretty sure that's what it would take to secure them. And then I worked towards building that half a million dollars uh, so I could get rid of the policy. And I want to tell you what wealthy people have insurance policy. They own the insurance companies. And so I say to you, uh, learn how to study those that you really want to emulate or be like. So God bless you. I pray that you would take snapshots of your finance. Just start right now. Go in your house and start saying, well, I got $10 in that jar there. Uh, I got jewelry. I got some rare coins. I got a car in the garage that I really don't know how much it is. I haven't driven it in five years. I'm a blue book value it. Um, and then uh, learn how to put together a snapshot of your wealth. God bless you. Thank you for allowing me to come in your home and talk about properly allocating. Remember this, CDs, stocks, cash and banks, insurance, and assets. Assets are land, homes, jewelry, cars, clothes. God bless you and may the Lord smile on you. Well, praise God. This has been a JLJA Ministry production. Stay tuned for next lesson what God has brought me to teach and bring my pet, preaching, education, and teaching. God bless you. See you next week.